Let's see. I should just live stream them to YouTube. Uh, the bandwidth would not be good, actually. Okay, so, how's it going, Agen? Yeah, like, things have been busy, so I haven't been able to do much. No uh, worries, no worries. everything will settle down in two days. Yeah. But we, I see, I saw that you closed that issue, the OAuth one. Oh, yeah, the OAuth. So, I didn't, oh, did I close it? Uh, I think I closed it and no, reopened you it. Didn't, I don't think you closed it, but I said that, you said that you'll close it. Oh, damn it, I forgot to delete that part from the comment, sorry. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I was, like, writing that comment and, like, thinking in my head about what was going on, and, uh, okay. oh, god damn it, yeah, I didn't mean to, I meant to delete this comment after I edited the body of the issue. Okay, so, yeah, okay, so, okay. here's what happened, and then let me, sorry, let me, let me just, uh, make a, make a note here. Sorry about that, that was confusing. Um, so, let's see, February... 11th all right okay so open id connect uh, annotation operations all right so change from being http service related to something that can so so the point of this was uh i realized why what the i i forgot when I made this issue, I was thinking of the wrong thing, um, and I know we spent a lot of time talking about it, but the reason that I was thinking about this thing was so that when I remembered the original reason was, was because when you're building an application, right, and you might be chaining together a bunch of operations into a data flow, you, you might want some authentication on top of that, right? And so if we provided operations that knew how to do the authentication, then people would people don't have to re-implement that, right? Um so any I don't I didn't really get could you probably remember, yeah. like Okay, so yeah. let's see, let's see. Um Okay, so for example, um, when we take should I in this tutorial, we take should I and we deploy it behind this uh, slash should I URL, um, and we get this JSON back, right? So the idea here would be, and then the, where's the data flow? Come on. Yeah, okay, so this is the data flow that's happening, right? So the idea here would be to um, somehow like, use this operation like and i don't know exactly how we're going to do this right now but it's probably going to be i don't know it's some way of like maybe chaining on the front of the data flow or like you can't like gating the just having the http service accept an operation like to do authentication in front of a root something like that right like we want to everything we want to distill down to some level of an operation and that'll bring me to some input validation stuff later um and that way we can just say, okay, like if you want to do authentication, we provide, like you can plug in the open ID connect thing. I wish I could draw on the screen, like in front of this whole data flow so that before, before I hit, like as soon as I hit this URL, the first operation that's run is the verify the okay, open ID okay. connect token or something. And then you could also deploy like the open ID connect um, callback handler the callback handler could be an author operation itself and that could sit in and then you could just register that to a url path right um okay yeah yeah okay cool um so yeah that's the idea there um and and then the other thing was let's see i was also talking about oh this is in the same vein let's make an issue for this while i was thinking about it so so um df types okay input so so we we added that input validation which is great right so now we can validate our inputs as they go into the network which is very cool um and then i was thinking okay well what if we had some input that needed to be validated in some sort of asynchronous way right well then we'd want to really reference an operation right so we might say like hey this input is going to be validated by this operation, and then the operation is running in in you know the asynchronous runtime. Um, oh, okay, where, okay, okay. Yeah, exactly. So we're just basically all we're going to do is say 
uh, so val okay, validation. Another operation to validate. Okay, we are exactly. That. Hmm? Yeah, and I was thinking we could probably just do this in a, in a simple as saying, okay, the validation instead of equals function equals the instance name of the operation within the data flow, right? Because okay. we've already got all the you know the, we've got all the stuff to load operations and everything, and and they're ready to be run. Um, all it needs to happen is they need to go through this operation first, right? And then you okay. could have something that you know goes and checks the database to see if the user ID is still active or something as the validation operation or like you know since it, it takes the returned value um, you could actually like take a username and password and transform it into some sort of token that gets passed around for the rest of the flow something like that right um, so uh, uh, use option to use uh, operations within data flow okay so and then let me just write this real quick here um, let's see uh, how long will this take me yeah, probably medium amount of time we got to go mess with the memory.py which I will document um, <laughs> I am I am it's on my radar um so uh, the main but, things like it makes sense after i added that single your documentation okay it made better sense that. it did okay okay yeah. cool so let's see but i still need the documentation yeah <laughs> okay so let's see and then these are like Immediate next steps. So I'm cool. gonna talking try to about go. the uh, uh, John, have you seen the OINNX uh, web model? The what? Uh, OINNX. Oh. And I'll put the link. Yeah, there. yeah. The Onyx web model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Have you seen that? I've seen Onyx, yeah, but I haven't seen. I know that they they do like you can probably load this into TensorFlow JS or something, right? But yeah, so uh, they have some five models as an example. So they host some pre-trained models. Mm -hmm. that look pretty cool. So do we have some plans to host pre-trained models or something? I don't think we need to host. Like in the I mean, so the thing is, uh, I'm not hosting. Uh, yeah. Continue. Continue. Um, well, I just mean I don't think we need to really host pre-trained models, right? Um, because we the I mean the the main goal of uh, like we could host some some pre-trained models at some point I guess but but our, our main goal is right create help people create new trained models and then help people use existing ones and there's also a lot of other frameworks that focus on deploying trained models and they probably do a better job right because that's you know their bread and butter um, so I think our real strength is that we help people create a new model without writing a lot of code right um, and so, while it's definitely useful to be able to use the pre-trained models, like I think that's a super awesome thing that that we've added. Um, I think that uh, people people may end up deploying them with other things. Um, I think that we yeah. might. We'll probably the the thing with the data flow stuff is that. The idea is to make it very easy to deploy the trained models, right, um, within the data flow, or just by saying, "Hey, that's a one-off operation that that runs this model," right? And so that, in theory, should make it really easy to use the the pre-trained models or or any trained model. Um, that that and that's and that's why we're that's like that's why we want to add pre-trained models and stuff is because we've got this easy way of deploying things, which still needs to be a little bit more documented um yeah. and uh but but yeah so so hopefully at, at one point we can be you know as performant as everybody else but um you know if not then then we've got the data flow stuff which just lets you hook things together really easily right whether that end up hooking out to some other you know more more like c-based really heavy duty like model serving thing uh, i i saw that like dynamic operation creating thing no like a dynamic data flow creative thing where you just drag and drop and connect it. That's pretty cool. Oh, you saw that that I issue? Yeah. Yeah, see, yeah, that'll yeah. be a really cool thing to add to the web UI. And it, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, that'll be. I mean, that's that'll probably be a longer project. Doing any sort of UX work like that is tricky. But it looks like whoever wrote that library is. I mean, there's some other projects that are similar out there, but they usually operate at a much higher level than and don't provide as much customization as as we're providing here. Like we're 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 providing a level of customization where you can literally do anything, right? Like and and you can configure it all the way down. Um, whereas I think what they're doing is mocking up these frameworks that like provide interaction between various web APIs like Dropbox and, and Google Drive and stuff. And they let you sort of like stitch together a few pre-canned things, right? Whereas we're trying to stitch together anything, right? So so yeah, they've already so done a lot of the work there, which is good. But but we just need to figure out how to integrate it into the web UI. Yeah, like I showed that thing around to a couple of my friends. Like they all found it very useful. Like yeah. everyone's looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, that'll be sweet. Um, so let's see. Uh, okay, so but what were you gonna say about Onyx? Is there like a web uh, version of this? I assume there yeah, is, right? Yeah, uh, I'll put it in. It's a it's a kind of crude version where they just have some basic examples. I I think I have the links. Cool. Already. Yeah. So another thing that we're gonna want to do eventually is. Implementation. So eventually, we're going to want to do a JavaScript. Like we're going to want to do implementations in other languages, right? Because the generic, like, like all what what we're really doing here is exposing a general way of configuring and using these things, right? And so it doesn't really matter what language you do it in. Um, and that's that's also the the strength of doing the meta definition level of the data flows is that we can we can. Um, we could take the data flows and you know have them in an, in a JavaScript page, and then we could say, okay, well, run you know run this data flow, and if the uh, if the function haps, happens to be implemented in JavaScript, great. If it happens to be implemented in Python on the server side, great. It doesn't matter. I just give the data flow into the JavaScript side, and it and it the execution engine can link up both the Python on the server and the execution engine in the browser itself, and and complete whatever that data flow is, right? So and it might be like use the trained model and if the trained model happens if we happen to have support for that trained model within javascript then we can just run it there right um yeah. so that's kind of that's you know long term that's that's what we're thinking here so we'll we'll want to do that stuff long term where we where we where we hook up these kind of javascript based frameworks as well um so let's see Im let me just finish this note on the input validation all right so input validation use uh, to use operations with the data flow uh, if validation parameter of definition is set to an instance operation. Operations instance name within a data flow uh, use that. Okay. Uh, use the output of that operation as the validation. Um, so, and then note for now, obviously the operation can only have one input and one output or else we wouldn't know what to do. Cool. Okay, so all right, let me just make a note of that. Okay, so we got that. Great. Okay, so further input validation. Okay, sorry. Continue. Uh, you had something else you were going to say, I think. Yeah, I I posted a link in GitHub. Okay, great. Um, so let's see. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, okay, sweet. So, like, they had a really nice amnist example. Yeah, nice. Uh, oh, yes, I have uh, seen this actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, correct. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, I remember playing around with this. I remember at one point it didn't work though, so okay. that was like four. No, wrong. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a pretty crappy four. But yeah, it's so cool. so let's do. Uh, we'll want to leverage uh, on 
max in JS for pre-trained models. Yeah, that'll be really cool. Um, and obviously, you know, if anybody feels like taking a stab at starting that in at any point, like, just go for it. Um, but that's obviously going to be a bigger project, right? Like, in terms of the... I mean, the thing the, is, one of my projects, I align with that. Like, one of my course assignments, I have to make a review I follow on Onyx. Oh, yeah? Models. Oh, and nice. That goes well. I think we can move that here. That would be great. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, I mean, yeah, that would be ideal. So I think, I mean, if you're going to do that, then uh, let's see. Um, yeah, if you have to do this anyways, okay, how do we best use this? Um, okay, like, okay. So far, we have, I had to do five, you know, four models, two classification and two object detection models. Uh -huh. Two yes, yeah. And okay. And PyTorch and this. So I was doing that with this in mind. So maybe we can have those PyTorch models imported and we can have the UI part imported. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, the PyTorch is obviously going to be in Python, right? So yeah, that would be yeah. that would be cool if you made a, a PyTorch package for that, um, like one of the plugins, um, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then for the Onyx stuff, yeah, I guess however you do that, if you maybe just like create the class in JavaScript, you know, JavaScript has classes now, um, and yeah. so you can you can you can just sort of like mock up the model class the way it sort of is right now right in python and then like implemented it within that and then we can try to just like wrap that up into the rest of the the framework um or like you know when we go to create the i guess it doesn't really matter how you do it as long as you define them in some common format right then we yeah. can mold that for common format into the the api that matches on the javascript side right because we'll want to do like a re-implementation in javascript the only thing is that uh, you know JavaScript doesn't have the uh, the context management that that Python has. Yeah, so we might want to have like you know we might want to have like uh, you know model and model context still, um, and then within that um, you know you just have like an open or a begin and an end method, right? And that would be the the context management. Um, so uh, instead of context management. Uh, maybe use a begin and end method. Um, okay, that would be, yeah, that would be awesome. Cool. Yeah, let us know how that goes. I'm curious to see uh, yeah. what you do there. That'll be really fun. Um, oh, man, that made me think of something. Um, ah, ah, that's gone. Oh, well. <laughs> um let's see. Uh, okay uh let's see um uh, what else was i gonna mention i mean you guys saw so i kind of put there's the release notes up and then i put the general highlights as well um so we saw um you know unsuper let me add this to the uh to the, these notes too actually so uh version released version 0.3.3 all right so we got uh, unsupervised learning models, thanks to Himanshu, and then thanks to um, Saksham, we have the IDX3 source, um, and then Agen added the abstraction around databases, and then, you know, uh, we started doing the, the NumPy doc string here and there, and I can show you guys an example of that real quick, um, API reference, high level, and this goes into another bullet point, but I added this high level API. Um, so basically, you can just, um, and I'll show you the quick start soon, but, but oh, wow, okay, properly linked that, awesome. Um, but yeah, so we can, uh, it's, it's very, it's basically kind of like the CLI, but from Python, um, and this is just an example of what the NumPy doc strings look like for that stuff, so we can try to start commenting more, um, because then people will, like that one, uh, that one person came on a few weeks ago and said, hey, you guys, it would be great if you had doc strings, so... You know, this will probably help people a little bit, and then eventually we can add some examples um, and, and get those examples run within the CI. Um, and then the other thing that this stuff just is, I threw this stuff under a quick start, and this is going to go in with, I know we need to beef up the command line documentation. Um, so basically the quick start goes like, here's the data set. And then here's the command line, how we would train a model, how we would use the model, and then some command line flags explained, which needs to go into the you know the main command line docs pretty much as well. 
and then this is like okay how would we do it from python with this new high level api well we instantiate the model train them and let me make this a little bigger here instantiate the model train the model assess the accuracy you can just pass in the data right make a prediction gives you the salaries um and then there's like this very shorthand where you just pass like okay use the training.csv file or you know specify the source um so this is all the same stuff that you could do with the uh with the cli classes um only like you know now that's nice little clean functions and then of course the same stuff but with async and await um and then let's see yay we finally changed src url to key that was great um we got the cool input validation and the spec stuff which is also input validation um and you can have uh multiple multiple features can be predicted on for one repo instead of always overwriting the same thing that's being the prediction so that was some 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 really solid stuff got added in this version um that was really great work guys so yeah thank you to everybody um who's been working on this it's uh we're making some awesome progress here um so yeah i guess uh let's see let me quickly go over the pull requests um and we can see where uh, john have that. you registered for gsoc yet, yes like, yes python. i think we should be i don't know if terry's gone in uh python and gsoc i don't know if she's gone and copy pasted this it's stuff. not like yeah a lot of organizations have been listed already for python but the FFML wasn't there, so yeah, that's I I sit next to the uh, the person who runs the Python GSSC, so I'm ninety nine percent point nine 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 percent sure that we're good. I think she just hasn't gotten around to uh, to because yeah, I said it's under there. project ideas. Oh, project ideas, yeah. CV bin tool, yeah. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I'll just go talk to Terry. Okay, so that's a good note for me. Uh, John, talk, talk to Terry about GSOC. Okay. Oh, assigned to me. All right. Whatever. All right. Um. All right, thanks for bringing that up. I might need to, and and the ideas that I had on here. I mean, I posted the. There's two ideas that are posted on here, basically, right? There's like, but obviously these are just the ideas that I thought of. Like, there's lots of ideas. We all have lots of ideas of things to do. I mean, you can just submit whatever idea you want, right? Um, obviously, you know, run it by me first, and and Yash is going to be helping mentor as well, and so is Sudarsana, and then uh, Terry and Rahul, and like you know, we've got we've got a few mentors more mentors than last time this time around um so uh yeah it'll be good to just submit you can just submit whatever ideas you want obviously but these are just some pre-canned ones because there's uh you know there's a lot of a lot of people who are just like jumping on and they aren't as familiar with the project as you guys are and they're looking for like okay what kind of ideas could i propose right um, and so those two ideas are basically finish the shirt eye project, which I think we all probably know about this by now. Um, and if not, it's basically the new operations tutorial builds the static analysis tool, um, meta static analysis tool that runs other static analysis tools. Um, and, uh, basically, uh, there's a bunch of links and a whole, um, project set up to track all of these issues so that one's very pretty clear cut and then the other idea that's pretty clear cut and i'm probably gonna we're probably gonna add some more as we think of some more but obviously like i was saying you can you can always just propose whatever um actually last week we discussed about this and uh, uh, yeah. i found a couple of libraries we could wrap up cool this year like there's shogun and ml pack Okay, They're both in C++, but they have a Python wrapper, I guess. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so let's see. What were those? Shogun and MLPack. I'll just forward the links in GitHub. Okay, sweet. So, small projects. Wrapping. Yeah, I think... Oh yeah, I really think things are coming along strong now. I've got a I've got a meeting with someone today to see if uh, see if they'll they'll be able 
you know, if, if they were thinking DFFML could help them do something here around Intel, I think, um, and so I've got a meeting with them today, and, and we'll see if see if we can get somebody somebody using it there, and then I'm going to get, I'm trying to come up with, for this, since we got so much stuff in this release, I'm going to come up with a very marketing flashy screenshot-y uh, email and send that out um, to the mailing list, which I don't think there's anybody but me subscribed to, but nevertheless, I'll send it out to the mailing list. Um, and I'll send it out probably just spam around Intel and, and then maybe anybody who's, who's contributed, um, will get the email. Um, and, uh, you guys can tell me, tell me, tell me what you think of this, this very cheesy marketing email. Um, so John will send out cheesy marketing email. Um, and this is something that was told to me recently is, is, you know, as, as engineers, we get very uncomfortable uh, promoting our work because we're always like, it's not done. Don't look. It's not done. Um, <laughs> but at some point, uh, you know, at some, I think we're at a really good point here and we, we really need to go broadcast, even though it may not be the most polished thing ever. It definitely is pretty solid right now. I mean, we've got a lot of stuff in there. Um, and so we need to go broadcast to people. So, so I'll, I'll send out, how about I send out the first draft? Um, so let's see, send out cheesy marketing email. Um, we'll send first draft to everyone, uh, to all contributors. Um, or well, let's say, you know, all Every, every everybody who's who's like here in this meeting it has been contributing recently because you guys know know what's been going on recently too all recent contributors um for suggestions and edits and then we'll uh, broadcast uh final draft loudly to everyone who will listen um, cause I think we're, I think we're in a state right now where people can really just come and, and pick things up. Um, at least with the machine learning side of things, like we've got some, like the machine learning stuff is solid, right? Like you can use this thing to train models and use it on the command line and use it via Python. Like it's, it's, and the documentation is solid around it. Right. And, and thanks to all your guys' hard work, we've got a lot of models and, and things work very well. Um, so I think I think we're ready to sort of broadcast that out. I think the places where it needs improvement or it needs some more explanation on like you know it just needs a lot more documentation um, and that's a lot of stuff that I'm I'm gonna try to write. But if you guys ever feel like writing documentation, I know it's not the funnest thing in the world, um, but it definitely helps people use the project. Um, and so yeah, if you're ever if you're ever just like wow, you know I I am so bored. I would love to write some documentation. <laughs> That would be great. Um, but let's see. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, the HTTP API needs to be documented more um, um, because that's like people are going to be interested in, okay, how do I use this thing that I just trained like behind, you know, with the rest of my services? Um, and then we also need to document that. Oh, God, there was something that we needed to document. It was like pretty loud and like obviously oh the new the tutorials ah is it or the tutorials and the and the use case we need to switch we need to finish switching the uh, did i spell classification right yeah i did okay um we need to switch this guy over to using the so major things major things for next release um more docs, uh, HTTP usage, um, switch, uh, MNIST example, example, finish MNIST example, um, and uh, finish switching over the uh, integration usage integration example. So, so finish switching over to use the um, new run data flow and um, scrap the old source in favor 
of uh, DB stuff. So those, those are the main things that I think we need to, to clean up um, right now to make it a little more polished. Um, and then the tutorials. A new source slash model. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the usage right now is, is pretty, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, it would be great if you guys could go through this and, le and let me know how it, how it, how it seems so, and, and make issues, please. Um, so if you find things that don't make sense, um, and then we can all just sort of, you know, plug away at making the docs more clear. Because I think right now, you know, our strong suit is obviously, it's super easy to train models and use models from the command line and, and now hopefully the Python API as well. Um, so how do we how do we make sure that that stuff is really solid and then and then we just need to go polish up the rest of the docs and then keep adding docs because we've got a lot of features that we don't have documented right now, especially around the data flow side of things with that input validation that got added and and how you might use that stuff. Um, so yeah, um, okay, uh, and then pull requests. Let's go through the pull requests. So. Okay, so I saw this work in progress tensor f or the the Whirlpool Rabbit. So the TensorFlow Hub, we're still. Um, yeah, so this so this was stuck because of our uh, that. Uh, yeah, TensorFlow we got a problem. So find tomorrow the doc I'll strings. push this. this yeah. Ready, uh, by tomorrow we'll finish this. Okay. Did you did so? Did you have a chance to do the doc string stuff? Uh no, doc string thing is not done, but I will finish that. Uh, okay. By, uh, by tomorrow. Okay, cool. But that uh, parsing the layer thing that was done, so no problem. Oh, that. nice. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and I saw you sure. fix. Great job fixing the TensorFlow uh, one to two. Did you find <laughs> out what the issue ended up being? Yeah, it, it was because they have changed some of the default values of the parameters. Mm. Okay, so and uh, and now so our model was not converging. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Oh. So I. I saw their source code and then I read the documentation. Then I figured out this is the problem. So, nice we job. Using the T yeah. So we were using the TF dot esti estimator module. So that mm -hmm. was a problem. So mm -hmm. when I turned back to TF dot compact dot v one, then uh, all the because they have the same same behavior like the version one. So yeah. Everything was restored. So now it's working fine. Okay. So that sweet. Was the problem. Awesome. But I have seen it failing so many times that after this, when I'm running the Yes, I'm like, oh God, please don't fail this time. Oh, uh, <laughs> it, it, so it failed times. after you after we merged it. It's still failing. Sometimes. No, no, no. It's not failing. No, oh, no okay. it's not failing. Oh, okay, yeah, great. It was, yeah. Yeah, it was. <laughs> okay. All right, sweet. So ended ended up being an issue um, with uh, uh, it ended up being default with parameters. Yeah, default. All right, great. Hey, thanks for fixing that. That was sweet. Um, so TensorFlow Hub model still need yeah, yeah, this will finish, um, like tomorrow. the config parsing config or the doc string config. Yeah, and that I mean the reason why we're doing that obviously I I mean you you know why we're doing that but. But just, I added these, so I added those NumPy config functions. If you guys see these NumPy config functions, um, they're, uh, it's, it's, you know, so we added make, we have the config decorator, right, which creates the config class, like it, it, it makes the, any class into the data class, it just wraps the data class stuff. And then we've got make config, which wraps um, the make data class function and adds our special fields and stuff. And then we've got, and and now we've got the NumPy make NumPy config, which basically reads it parses a NumPy style doc string, and then tries to extract the type information from it, um, because just extracting the the if if you just read the default arguments, sometimes they're none, and like the and the NumPy documentation will tell you like this is an integer or none, um, and so we'd really like that um, that default that type type hinting information to say it's an integer because when we go over to the web UI and we're pre-populating all of this stuff we're going to want to know what we're going to need to make build forms in the web UI with the appropriate data entry types um, and that stuff is going to be provided to us by these config structures 
Um, and so it's important that we get the type hinting information correct. Um, and, and so therefore that's why we're having to parse out these doc strings. And so we're doing the same thing for TensorFlow basically and trying to parse its doc strings to extract the typing information, which unfortunately I don't think is always required or like, I don't think they always give it, but that's sort of like a moot point. Like we're guessing it anyways, if it's not there. Um, so it's just like, hopefully it works. Um, let's see. And then, yeah. And the main point of that was so. Oh, yeah, and the main point of that was so that we could build those, um, the config classes for the dense, for the different layers. So basically, once you've got this, um, so once, once tensor or make, 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 come on, config tensor flow is done, uh, you can use it. It can be used to, um, once make config TensorFlow is done, it can be used to, uh, or, it, or we can pass all the layers, um, layer classes to it and create configs for those layers. And then, uh, have and then and then and then obviously we need to 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 create something that that says I think we're going to need like a whole entry point thing on this. But basically, once you get the config parsing, come ping me, um, and then okay. we'll need to make entry points for this. Okay, yeah, I think we'll need to make entry points for these, unfortunately. So uh, talk to John after configs are being created successfully. Um, copy the format or copy the way DB was added. All right. So basically like when we added the database stuff, we added these dynamically loaded bolt databases and they're just like any of the other plugins. You basically just register them in the setup.py file, right? And we're gonna have to do the same thing for these dense layers to make them discoverable um, when we're doing the configuration loading because it'll go through and it'll say, okay, what's the name of the layer? Well, it'll be dense, right? Okay, well now I need the config for the dense layer. Okay, and now it's all these, now it's all those options that we were passing, you know, just like, you know, named options. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's the entry point stuff, and and uh, I, we need to document that too. That needs to be documented. So uh, actually, I think there's an open issue for that already. Um, document how to add a new or plugin. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, this is still here. Okay, so let me. Okay, let me make a note because we are. I already made a note that we wanted to document this, but it still hasn't been done. So we'll document it as we go on this one. Um, so and then the Wopal Rabbit stuff. Uh, Wopal. Yeah, so, so that is uh, that is working fine because it has so many options. So I have to check each and every option before, yeah. before adding them. So this uh -huh. is taking time. Uh, but this thing, uh, we have a lot of dependencies. So yeah. How to mention those in the setup.py because we will certainly need that to run the CI tests and all. Mm. Yeah. So this is tricky. Um, so, um, so. I mean, okay. it took a lot of time for me to fix it on my system. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a lot of time. Yeah. Hence the dependency hell term. <laughs> Um, so yeah. Okay. So there's no, as far as I know, there's no great way to do this. Right. And it depends. Did you compile Wopal Rabbit, Wopal Rabbit from source? Yeah, I had to do that. Okay. You didn't pip install it or did you pip install it? Did you get clone and then pip no, install so it? it? It was not working in my system. It had, mm -hmm. I have some weird problem. It was working. It, I tried it in one of my friend's system and it is properly working, but on my system, it was not working. Okay. So I had to do everything from scratch, but it should work. I guess um, I have something going weird here. Okay. So basically, 
So for CI, if pip install from PyPy doesn't work, we'll be in for headaches. Um, yeah, uh, for CI, I think it works because oh, I it mentioned does. it in the setup the API and it works, but it doesn't install the boost. That is the dependency for it. Uh, okay, so that's the thing. Yeah, okay, so basically that's... We need and to. They need to be installed using the. Do using a something. package manager. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So could not find boost, and okay, and it's actually trying to go build it. So fuck. Okay. Yeah. Um. Okay. So let's see. Yeah. So this is a problem. So all right. So for CI, uh, need to install. Um, Need to ensure um, boost and other dependent. Okay. Um, need to make sure we document the how to install dependencies. On various distros. Okay. Uh, no, that's not what I meant to say. Okay. Um, ignore. Um, uh, all right. So, and this, so basically, yeah. I'll try to, uh, okay. Um, we need to just figure out. So, so try to add, I think, I think what should work is that, where did that page go? Um, was it here? Um, yeah, okay, here was this. Okay, so let's try to add, hey, did they change the, oh no, maybe it was here. Yeah, they did change. They did just change this. Yeah, okay, no, two no. hours ago, I was like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> this wasn't how it was." Yeah, this is the. This is okay, the so we need to reference. Okay, so. Uh, okay. Need to reference um, in the init.py of uh, okay in. The doc string of so basically, if we mention yeah, so this right here, these blank lines right here will get populated with the doc string of um, of this file. Um, so if we put in the doc string in that file, if like we make a new doc string and we say, hey, make sure you install these things first. Um, um, Okay, need to reference blank in the here. So yeah, if we basically, you know, you put the triple quotes and then say, hey, before installing this, you need to go see this, right? And then tell people that they're gonna need to do, you know, ideally they, they catch that they need to do this, right? Um, so, and then for us, we need to add number two. Um, so let's see, for CI, uh, need to add bullet to under for under Linux uh, of above install guide to the dot github slash workflows slash testing dot yaml um, under the uh, it's, uh, under, let's see, where is it? It needs to get added under workflows. So this is where, like, main, the main CI script that runs is the testing, or the ci.run.sh, but then this, of course, like, sets up some stuff around that. Um, so it needs to get run in here. Um, and... This is where obviously it's installing various things for various specifics. Like it'll say, okay, the the Git features need Talkie installed, and you know the MySQL source needs um, 
needs uh, MySQL installed or the oh Docker installed. Um, so under okay, so that and that that should be good to fix the problem in the CI then. Sweet. Okay. Um, let's see. Is there anything else on this guy? Uh, I don't know. Cool. Is there anything else on your? Finishing it up and then. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. This will be very cool. And then I'll ping Rahul again. I think he's been. I think it it dropped. He said make sure to. He said make sure to let him know so he could he could check it out. But I think it's dropped off his radar. So I'll I'll ping him again and and make sure that he knows. I think he's in a meeting right now. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. Um. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else from uh, from you, Himanshu? Then. Uh, no, other things are fine. Cool. All right. Great stuff. Great stuff. Um, yeah. All right. Let's see. And then everything else. So who's on right now? Okay. Um, yeah. So Saksham, is there? What? What are? Are you? Do you want to continue on the MNIST stuff? Oh uh, yeah, the last week was kind of busy for me. I'm sorry. Uh, no I'm worries. On, I'm on. I'm on the MNIST thing, right? Uh, and I think I can. Uh, I have got something to do. All right. So in two or three days, I think I'll open the pull request, and you can review it and uh, tell me what else you want changed or anything. All right. If there's anything wrong with it. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, I think I think if I remember correctly, the last thing we talked about was basically we just need to figure out uh, we want to we want to figure out how to do the prediction flow, right? So we're going to need to implement some source that will read some something that resembles an image, right? Um, uh, I'm using the Python imaging library. Perfect. That, uh, yeah, pillow. There's no problem with uh, you. Yeah, yeah. We'll probably throw that into. Um, we may throw that into its own into its own sub module, right? With the other one, I just so I, I got in there and and I realized that I we'd miscommunicated on the um, on the on the config stuff, and I, I had meant to make it a class parameter instead of a config thing. So I did a find replace in there, and then I went and. Uh, oh, I realized that we had gzip already supported. So when I went to update the tutorial, I realized okay, we don't we don't have uh, we don't have to ungz that file when we download it. And I did that, and then I found that that numpy function was actually it, it didn't work. It didn't work with the compressed file support that we have. It it blew up. Um, and then I, I did some googling on Stack Overflow, and it turned out that um, the uh, that the numpy function reads from the underlying file descriptor because it's implemented in C, which is why that one day when we went through and we tried to figure out, oh, could we just not import numpy? Well, we couldn't we couldn't figure out what the hell is going on because it's, it was it wasn't there. It was in C somewhere buried underneath. And so um, uh, yeah, we uh, we couldn't figure that out and that, that was why. And so the NumPy stuff worked, right? Um, so we used that, but then with the gzip, it wasn't working. So I eventually just realized that this is just an array of 60,000 bytes, so we can just like struct, read a byte at a time. And I did that, and then I did it for the other one, the three by three byte, so it was like read whatever the array index is at a time, so like 748, I think. And it actually was faster than NumPy. <laughs> Yeah, I saw that you changed uh, let go a little bit. Yeah, it's just just small tweaks there. It's basically just instead of using the NumPy from array, it was just like the struct from from un struct unpack. But I was just blown away. But I just didn't understand. Like, I think the NumPy thing must be reading it one at a time. I think it was because it read it one at a time and then reshaped it. Whereas this way, we don't have to. Uh, yeah, it reshaped it. Right? Yeah, we don't have to reshape with this. Um, so that was a happy accident there. Um, I just want to let you know what, what, what nice. yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, okay, that'll be great. If you do pillow, then we'll want to, same thing, um, we'll want to throw it in, uh, in a sub package. If, uh, I've done uh, some research and like I found that we can read the image using matplotlib.imread. Uh, oh, mypl. sweet. Sweet. That could be great. Yeah, okay, so uh, let's see. Like this, we won't have to like uh, import the CV library. Yeah, that'll be sweet. Um, yeah, OpenCV is a pain. Uh, 
<laughs> if you guys have ever used Open CV before, you'll yeah, you, you I'm sure you agree with that. But it's a huge pain, and it's a talk about setup, like talk about things that are hard to install. Yeah, the Python Open CV library is hard to install. If, at least the last time I used it, because um, sometimes you'll want to use like version two versus version what was it version two versus version three or something, and version three is like the new one, but they've done a really bad job of packaging it or something. I can't remember what it was. This is a few years ago, but it was a pain. Hopefully, it's better it now. Three, right? What? Uh, it was. I think I was using the second version. Yeah, I can't remember what how it was, but I remember having a lot of pain with it. So I'm glad. It, I'm glad it's working. Um, let's see. So MNIST uh, going going to do the prediction part um, using. Also, the, the reshaping thing is. Uh, I can. Uh, we can reshape any. Any image, any ND array image, uh, array into any size. Nice. Nice. Um, okay, sweet. Is there anything you need from me on that now, or just, I guess, ping me when you when you need yeah. something? I'll message you on Gitter if uh, it gets stuck somewhere. Awesome, awesome. Sweet. Cool, cool. And then, let's see. Um, and then... Yeah. Okay. So, what else do we have here? So, Agen, we have the. We still need to finish up this this data flow stuff, which is which has been long and drawn out. Um, but this stuff is hard. <laughs> so, let's see. Yeah, this was all the stuff where we were actually putting it together in a data flow. Ooh, and I think I might go through and rebase on this. Um, yeah, because I think a lot of things happened here. Uh, yeah, it got all confused. I think it's very confused. GitHub is confused, yeah. Um, I can't even remember where we were with this one. Um, uh, we had to do the export thing. Oh, the export thing. I still owe you the export yeah. thing. That's right. Like, after the layer, we, that thing needs so many changes. We yeah. changed the class, right? So we need to change that key. Uh, that's, there are no minor changes, I guess. Yeah, this is, okay, so I owe, yeah, so John owes the export. Uh, for now, it works in Python. It doesn't work in CLI because we can't export it. Okay, yeah. So, but with all the new updates, it will be broken in Python also. Because <laughs> I'll change that. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll change that. See. No, don't worry about it. Let me, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll do this one. I forgot. I yeah yeah this one has been uh, well, the the good thing about this one is that that uh, I chopped it up and we merged in a significant amount of it. Um, yeah. So like a lot of it is in. Yeah yeah we've got all the database stuff which is great. Um, and I and and but but okay so the, now I remember the reason why this hasn't gotten done yet is the config stuff because um, this is heavy on config stuff and and basically we're going to end up you know we're going to fix the export but then what's going to happen with the import um, and and so what I was thinking is when I go do this I might just go do the unify config issue which is like a long thing um, and so this is kind of because we just have some one example to merge right I think we merged everything else. Yeah, yeah. I think everything everything else got merged, but we just we basically were just trying to finish up the stitching together. Like the data flow works, I, if I remember correctly. We just need to, yeah. We just need to, um, yeah, get all the CLI commands working for the example documentation, and then update the example documentation. I think, right? That's it. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, so, but yeah, and so since this had so much to do with like, I have a feeling that like a lot of the problems that we're running into here are due to the fact that the, that of that, you know, the config code is like all over the place. So I'm thinking that, that, that this is the point where I'm just going to go and, and, and spend a good amount of time maybe over next weekend or something and, or this week and, and try to get in there and, and really fix the config stuff. Um, make everything operate off the config classes, right? Even fix the CLI and stuff. Just make sure that it works all the way down and it's properly like serializing and deserializing all these structures. Um, because we yeah, should be able to... What? 
uh, we want that anyways for the web UI. Exactly. Then... Yeah, we really need to make sure that that stuff is rock solid because or else we're just going to run into issues everywhere. And the fact that there's just like so many different places config parsing code gets done different ways is it's not okay right now. So I, and and that, and that was my mess that I created. So I I am going to go clean it up. Um, so. Yeah, so that that and that should make a lot of other things easy. Like I posted some issues about the sources recently. Um, sources or configuring. Uh, we don't really need to write that down. But this is something that uh, I think uh, Himanshu we talked about uh, at one point where you had brought up the issue that the repos merge. Um, and so uh, I realized. Yeah, they were at each other. Yeah, we need to we need to come up with a solid way to configure the sources. Um, and so that's something that's also going to benefit a lot from, I think, unifying the config stuff. Um, so hopefully this all gets sorted out um, pretty quickly here. Um, but yeah, I think, I think yeah, actually, I think unifying, when we unify the config, that's going to make the sources really easy to pass options to, at least from the command line. And then the, con this, the, the, um, the, God damn it, the HTTP API will probably just follow suit, um, hopefully, because we'll make it standard, right? Um, yeah, yeah, it should be good. Yeah, it should be good, actually. It should work. Um, so, yeah, there's just a lot of things that will be made so much easier, so much easier by fixing the damn config stuff. Um, but yeah, okay, I think that's all I had on the docket for this week. Um, is there anything else you uh, guys want to... I just forwarded... I just forwarded the links to the library. All right, great. Yeah, that's what I was going to go with next. Sweet. So let's talk about let's talk about this stuff. So ML pack. Oh, I missed one. What? Denied. Ah, well, I cannot see this website right now. Well, this is what happens. Sad, sad. This is an open source library. Yeah, I think blacklist certain URLs. It's dumb. And then I have to go submit tickets to IT, and it sucks. Um, I'll look at it on, on my on my phone or something. Um, so let's see. ML pack and Python quick start guide. Okay. Oh, and by the way, if uh, for, for everyone, for... for Okay, so this is why the the stuff that you're running into with Vopal Rab Rabbit, that's why Conda exists. It's because Conda knows how to install all of these things to like a sub root, and that's why people like Conda so much. Is because for all these really C heavy things, like it, it simplifies all of that. Um, somebody asked me that at some point. It may not have even been somebody here, but somebody asked me why why does Conda exist, and and that's why, um, because it gets rid of the C package dependency hell um so let's see Drop label okay pretty standard stuff here pre-process split random for ml pack is actually faster i guess the implementation is faster than scikit nice yeah this looks great these this looks great yeah this looks really good i mean this is very high level too this is like you know good stuff um so yeah we should definitely Oh, this is awesome. Wow, this looks great. Okay, and then, okay, you train. Yeah, definitely. This is to be something really cool to wrap. Um, and obviously, yeah, wrapping machine learning libraries is a, is a solid solid project. Um, at this point, I think we've we've all got wrapping machine learning libraries really down down pat, so we might want to, you know, set our sites to, like, a certain number of functions in the library or something like that. You know, we want to quantify, um, right? There's, there's like, a project to implement. The project ideas are like this, right? It's like, okay, implement something that's hard and going to take a while, or implement something that, you know, is piece by piece easy, but you know, if, if you did just one little piece, it might not take you that long, so do a bunch of pieces, right? Because, of course, we the, we want the project to stretch the whole summer, right? Um, and uh, and then, you know, if you if you do get done with it, then, then, you, then you set some stretch goals for yourself, which is like, okay, I finished everything, now I'm going to work on X, right? And get all of that stuff sort of in a... It doesn't even really have to be in a common theme, right? Like, we've got 
Like you could be like, okay, I was I was implementing models, and then I'm going to go implement this data source that's going to be really helpful for using some of these models or something, right? Like, like it's a similar theme, but like you're hitting sources and models or um, something, right? Um, and like, I need to talk to Terry about this, but I was kind of keeping the web UI out of GSOC because it's not Python. Um, but uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the it, image stuff could get in, like we discussed about it, right? Scikit image and yeah, the operations related. Oh, yeah, yeah, we did, yeah, that and and that kind of stuff might be like the thing is, you know, if it's a lot of JavaScript programming, I don't know if we really want to like say that it's a Python GSOC project idea, right? Um, so but you know, any like anything, all of this stuff is going to get displayed eventually in the web UI, right? So, like, if you want to work on something that's going to look flashy once it hits the web UI, that's great. Um, but I think we're going to stay away from like act actual development on the web UI as a part of GSOC. It doesn't mean it can't be like you know, good stuff leading up to it or good stuff afterwards, right? Uh, it's going to be really important to have the web UI, um, to to reach reach a larger user base um but it, it may not be something that that we're we're submitting as as project ideas for for under the gsoc python gsoc or great um so any any other project ideas you guys wanted to bat around i mean i highly doubt anybody's gonna like like there's any any idea is good right um I just I may have some suggestions on 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 how we could make it like more fully featured or something right so just you can shoot me it offline um, and uh, and I'll you know I'll happily give you any thoughts on it at any point in the process so all right is there anything else you guys talked about last week that we should note down here uh, yeah we talked about uh, about uh, refactoring this TensorFlow code because that is not a very mature kind of thing. If you see that compared to scikit-learn code, then that is like a pretty perfect code for now. I, but the TensorFlow stuff is a bit like we need to change it. I am a hundred and million ten percent on it's not just board with this. Code, right? it's yeah, <laughs> yeah, <it's not> generalized. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So that's that's also um, you can thank for me for that. Um, so yeah, I, I that was the first. Uh, was, I I had some scikit models in an entirely different architecture of this thing, and I had some models in something else too, in in, in a really early architecture um, that never saw the light of day. Um, and then and then the TensorFlow stuff was some of the first stuff that that went in in this architecture, um, and uh, and and and. Yeah, it, it's not it's not pretty. <laughs> yeah, it would be great to have it refactor that that is uh let's let's make an issue of that. And like anything else you guys think of if uh just uh please make some issues um and you know we'll we can always just like leave them sitting there if we're not sure what to do with them at some point. We just know they like might need to be done. So model tensor flow refactor Okay, let's see. And this is, I'm going to put this as like, this would be, this would be, eh, it's like, this would be nice. It's important to do, but it's not really, it's not really a feature. Uh, that's not at all. That's no, it's average priority. It's, it's bad. <laughs> okay, and this is probably medium. All right. Milestone. Oh, and and I think I might have mentioned this, but basically the way that 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 we've been using the milestones is um, so if you go over to the milestones and you see uh, like if you're looking at them, the one point oh release is like okay, that's way far out there. Um, that would be that would be like DFFML is pretty dang complete, right? Like it's got all the features we really want in it. Um, and I've got sort of a laundry list in my head, um, but but it's uh, I've been having trouble writing them all down. But that'll probably get filled out more eventually. Beta release is like I I, I tag things beta release if they're like okay something that uh, I don't know I guess I guess I tag things beta release. Beta release in my mind is like um, 
we've got the web UI, we can create the data flows, we can deploy the data flows, we can deploy the data flows in like a environment like um, you know, Kubernetes or Spark or something, so it's distributed execution. Um, we've got like a significant amount of models in there and um, you know, er basically everything is really honky-dory, like it all is well. Um, and then 1.0 will basically be like, okay, now let's go re-implement this in other languages, make the languages talk to each other, um, and execute, you know, various pieces of the data flows across across different languages or services or, or, you know, maybe like, you know, you're calling from Python to C and that's a different implementation, but the, you know, we're still running the data flow execution engine on both sides or something. Um, and, or like different services. I, I saw some recent posts about Rust that look really good for running async code, um, and parallel code. Um, so, you know, we might, we might implement some things in Rust. Um, so that's like, you know, this is basically, this is how things are being viewed right now. Um, as like that 1.0 is, okay, we've got multiple languages of this, you know, paradigm working together. Um, and beta is like, okay, we've got it all done in Python and the web UI accessible, uh, really easy to use. And then the, uh, the just as we're going along releases here, anything, any issues that get done, like, so the way, the way that this works is create a milestone for whatever the next version number is, any open issues that aren't, you know, definitively, like we know that these are long-term things, um, we can close those whenever, right? But we know that there, there are things that need to be done before that stuff is, is before like, you know, we're at that major feature release. Um, anything that's sort of just like, we don't know when it needs to be done, but we know it needs to get done. Um, we'll just go in the next release bucket milestone. And then, um, and then if you want to see what happened in a given release, you can read the change log or you can, you can go to the closed ones. And, and basically once a release happens, I just roll over, uh, the rest of everything. Um, uh, yeah, other than that, oh, actually, some people asked me if I wanted to talk on a podcast recently. Actually, two people, funny enough, um, two people recently said, do you want to come talk about DFFML on a podcast? So there's going to be a local one, um, the local security group um, in Portland, uh, where I live, um, is is going to going to interview me about DFFML stuff and, you know, some security security side of things and some security applications of this. Um, and then there's some other, some other random people just messaged me from LinkedIn and they wanted to talk about open source projects and, you know, just in general, like, what's your open source project? Uh, how do you organize your open source project and how can people contribute? Um, so that those, those could be good. That'll be end of February and uh, beginning of March. Um, so I'm hoping to have the web UI at least semi-functional by then. So we can, so if, if people hear those that they'll, they'll, they'll have a little more user-friendly interface to, to what we're doing here. Um, but yeah, so that's updates on my side of things. Um, need to probably need to go try to give another talk at some point uh i submitted some things i know pycon just happened um but yeah any area if you guys see talks uh around you that you want to submit to that would be a very good plan um i think that that gets traffic you know that gets the word out of of what's going on um and helps helps people find our project that helps them do stuff right um so if you see any talks and you want you want some help review on your on your presentation i'll help review if anybody else wants to help you review that's cool um we can all you know help each other get prepared for these these things where we go and say hey this is what we're all working on right um and then other people can hopefully benefit from it so yep uh, i guess that's all i've got for today if anybody has anything else just chime on in I just wanted to point out that DFFL is now at 50 stars. Yeah, that's pretty sweet, huh? Yeah, I've it, it's been going up pretty steadily. Um, and, uh, I mean, over, it was like only three weeks ago, we were at like 36 or something, or 32, I can't remember. But we've gone up a significant amount in a few weeks here. Um, so, yeah. Yep. yeah. When I came, it was 30. Yeah, yeah. In the gen. Yeah. Yes. Because, uh, into in 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 less than one month, it's gone like twenty up or like something. Yeah. 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 It's uh, 
That's exciting. It's exciting stuff. Um, I actually, some of my coworkers still like turn over to me every once in a while and be like, Hey, you're up on stars. Like you, you went up some stars. Like, so yep. Yep. People, uh, the, the key now is we got to get people, uh, we got to get with some more users. I think we've got some people like messing around with it. Um, some people have obviously come on and said, Oh, how does this work? Or how does that work? But I don't, I don't know if anybody's really, I got to, we can't. We don't have any visibility into what people are doing, right? But I, I think you know the easier, the more we write documentation, and the more stuff we put in here, that the easier it will be for people to use. Um, but I know the documentation is key. So if you guys ever feel, if you're in a documentation writing mood, um, <laughs> that's always great. Um, so yeah. All right. Well, thank you all. Um, is there anything else, or? All right. Great. Hey, thanks, guys. It was good talking to you all this week. And to everybody who's still feeling kind of under the weather, I hope you all get uh, feel better soon. So, yeah, I, I got I got sick. That was no fun. Thanks for all your well wishes. That was very nice of you all. Um, and, yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Bye. Yeah, great.